believe me, just watch. We are back on the morning brew. Thanks, saxophone guys. Appreciate it. This is so much fun having these guys on. Isn't this great? Yes. Well, we're here with Dr. Uh, Lori Hudson and Dr. Angela Wandinger Ness from UNM Cancer Center. And this is great having you guys on because you guys Thank are doing you. some groundbreaking Thank research you. on ovarian cancer. Pleasure to be this here. Is, this is a great big deal, I think, right? Yes. Um, and you guys, we were just talking about this a second ago. It's Ketorolac. Is that how you say this new drug? Yes, old indeed. drug? Yes. It's an old drug. And you guys decided you were going to repurpose this? Yes, we, uh, in a team effort at the Cancer Center, uh, found that the drug had an unanticipated or unexpected activity and that was useful was that? in cancer. So we found that this drug, when administered to women, had a huge survival benefit, and this was done, as Lori said, as a team at the UNM Cancer Center. Cool. What was Ketorolac originally used for? It's used for pain relief after surgery. Oh. And so in it is um, uh, one component is the pain reliever. Mm -hmm. And there was another component that wasn't known to have any activity. Mm. And what it does is prevent uh, tumor cells from being able to attach to the abdominal cavity and burrow in. Wow. And we believe that that's part of the reason why there's this benefit, uh, wow. why women live longer if they receive this drug for pain relief. Did, did this come out of research you guys just kind of happened to notice? Or was this something that you went looking for a certain compound and found it in Ketorolac? Which way did that kind of? Um, we did some screens, high throughput screens, which means you can test a lot of chemicals very, very quickly. And we did that with Dr. Sklar. We have uh, the University of New Mexico Center for Molecular Discovery where we did that. And we tested them against enzymes that we were interested in. Very cool. So, and how much, how, how you said it prolongs sort of those viral rates. How long is that? I mean, is that like weeks, months, years, decades? Uh, to the best of our knowledge, at this point, it's, it's many years. Uh, Dr. Linda cool. Cook at the UNM Cancer Center, she's an epidemiologist and went back into records mm -hmm. of survival. And typically women, um, there's about 50% survival at five years, mm -hmm. and there was greater than 70% survival in After women who years. had this drug, yes. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, how many times do you guys come across these almost random situations where you find a drug that was used for one thing that can be used for cancer or something else? Well, the National Institutes of Health has made a priority in finding ways of already, uh, drugs that are already approved. Drugs we already uh, know are safe. Exactly. They're yeah. safe. We know how they all work in the body. And can they be used for another purpose, another disease? Mm -hmm. And it's through that initiative that Dr. Sklar and the uh, cancer for or the Center for Molecular Discovery uh, started that initiative to try to mix and match a little bit of a needle and haystack approach, and that was part of it. And this was part of it. Very cool. So what I, I love it when you guys come on because the Cancer Center comes on the show every now and then, and we get to talk about some of the cooler, bigger questions. How far are we until actually figuring out the riddle of cancer? Are we like getting really close to actually finding some kind of cure for this, or is it now just a finding ways to make the survival rates a lot longer for folks? I think we're down to precision medicine these days where we're understanding what the unique change or mutation is in the patient so that we can have targeted therapies and I think that's making a huge difference in a lot of cancers. And this is those are targeted therapies for each person like we've each we've person. talked about some of the genetic stuff before right, on the show. Right, right. Is that really as big a deal as we think it is? I, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's important because people have different tumors and then they can be targeted by specific medications that can be used in many people, but you have to know what the exact problem is. So you're really targeting what is the problem with this particular cancer. Right. Yeah. We say cancer is an umbrella term, right. but a lymphoma is very different than a lung cancer, mm -hmm. for example, and the the genetics that are driving it mm -hmm. um, differ. So yeah. having these targets and understanding how to interrupt them is, be, is very important. Very cool. So we're, how long until you guys think we actually solve this then? I mean, if we're getting really close and we're at the precision medicine level right now, I mean, are we looking at, you know, in our lifetimes being cancer free and then like thinking things like chemotherapy are just like stone age kind of technology or are we still going to be dealing with things like that? 
I think the fields move so fast, it's so difficult to predict. Yeah. Uh, but there's tremendous strides, both in the genetics and immunology. So many fields are just really just developing at this point. Very and, cool. I know the yeah. Cassidy guys are doing things across the board. Yeah. Right. So how did you guys get into this kind of research yourselves? Um, I, when I was at uh, Northwestern Medical School as a faculty member, I collaborated with another investigator, and she said, Lori, there's not enough research on ovarian cancer. It's an orphan cancer, and I think you need to work on it. And I believed her. Orphan <laughs> cancer? I've never heard of an orphan well, cancer. Well, one that is understudied right. compared to other cancers, yes. Well, why do you think that was? There are fewer um, people, women diagnosed than, let's say, breast cancer or lung cancer, mm. so it gets a bit less attention of course. in terms of research. Right. But and it's, yourself, a, devas it's yes. a devastating right. disease yeah. with poor, poor outcomes, and so that's why we're motivated. Mm -hmm. I came at it from the other side, studying enzymes that regulate how these cells attach to one another mm. and how they sit in the body and when those processes go wrong then the cells can move around and metastasize in the body and tumor mm -hmm. cells so that's how I came at the ovarian cancer and Lori and I have been working yeah. together for 17 years you oh, were wow. talking <laughs> earlier about uh, jobs in New Mexico I love my job yeah. in New Mexico right. Right. the UNM Cancer Center and the University of New Mexico Health Sciences Center are fabulous places. well there are very few places around where people are doing this kind of deep dive cancer research this is am I right in thinking it's the only it's the only one like this in New Mexico, I know that much. Oh, absolutely. So, right, yes. and there aren't many research institutes like this anywhere, right? Right. No. Yes. Right. And we'll right. So the um, so what do you think the next frontiers and the next big questions are going to be in cancer research? Cancer stem cells. Oh. So stem cells we've heard a lot about for therapies, but the same reason that they're good for therapies may be the reason that tumors have an advantage and can keep coming back. So if we can figure out how to target a cancer stem cell and keep it from coming back, I think we may have a hook. They can be reservoirs of, of tumor cells that can evade chemotherapy. Mm. So if we can find a target those, mm -hmm. we really may be able to um, eradicate cancer from the body. That'd be very cool. Yes, it'd oh, be great. important. And the other thing that's very cool is our buddies from the, hey. the Sachs Therapy this They're morning. Great. They're taking us out of all of our sets. I love this. It's so much fun to yeah. have these guys on.